What's good, fair gamers? Happy Thursday! Thank you so much for joining me for our weekly live stream known as Fair Game Favorites. Hey, you're, you're looking great today. Did you do something with your, your face? It looks good. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to uh, bring us back around to some travel game ideas. Uh, about a month ago, we talked about some top travel excuse me, some top travel tips. And there were so many good choices that I wanted to split it up a little bit. So tonight we're talking all about nice, lightweight, compact games that are great for travel because it's the middle of summer, baby, and it's not over yet. It should feel like it's still just getting up and running. But yes, we still have lots of trips to take as uh, family and friends uh, in front of us. Uh, and just like last night, or last week, I should say, I have a special coupon code for you if you stick around to the end of the stream, so be sure to hang out and get that secret, secret password uh, for some cool, cool savings. So, um, also, to incur a little bit of discussion here in the chat, I would love to know uh, what, uh, for anyone who's taken a trip so far this summer or in recent memory, uh, what kinds of activities did you bring along for your, uh, for your travels? Uh, I would love to hear it. It doesn't have to be a game. It could be uh, paint by number. If for some reason you brought that with you, it could be a classic game like Yahtzee. Uh, it, it could really be anything. I would love to hear more about what you do and what you love on your vacations. So chat, don't be shy. Let me know what you've been up to. Um, so I have a couple of recommendations for awesome, good travel games. A lot of these are going to be card games, which are always great because they're compact, they're lightweight. You can put them in a carry-on bag for the plane. Uh, if you are taking a road trip, they're, you know, they don't take up any space in your car. So tonight, my first recommendation for you is Robo Junkyard. Uh, this is in the same genre as Uno. So this is a, a card game where we're all trying to get rid of the junk that we have in our piles and we're trying to stick it to everyone else. So each player is playing as a cute little robot. Uh, I got a bit of a glare on the screen, but look at these little guys. What are they doing, these little goofers? Uh, it says on the side that uh, it's good for ages eight and up, uh, which apparently it turns me into an eight-year-old as well when I talk weird like that. Anyway, Robo Junkyard's great. Uh, you have a hand full of junk uh, that may or may not be in my trunk. Well said, Peter. The junk is in your trunk and you're trying to get it out of there. You want to get rid of all of your junk cards. And uh, it's, it's just a fast paced game where we're all putting cards into the middle of the table, into the discard pile. When you play these cards, um, you can uh, throw the junkyard pile to someone else. You might blow up the whole junkyard pile and all the junk goes somewhere else. You're going to skip other people's turns. Uh, again, it's, it's going to be a fun spin off of Uno if you're super tired of playing a draw for a wild. Uh, I think this game's awesome. It's got a really fun theme. The artwork is fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can turn down my light here to make that a little bit, a little bit easier to see. Uh, yeah, that 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 looks a little bit better there. So, um, first person to clear their hand out of all the junk wins the round, and then whomever wins six of these rounds is the winner of the whole game. Uh, and they've got an estimated time on the side of the box of like 20 to 30 minutes. So that gives you an idea of how fast these rounds are going. You know, you're just whipping around the table. This is a game everyone can play. Uh, it says eight and up on the side. You could probably do a smart six or seven year old because that game time is just not that long. So the attention span is going to be with us. I love it. This one's great. Um, if you're just joining us in the live stream, hello, welcome to Thursday. Um, I'm Graham, your... Uh, captain here, and I'd love to hear about what kind of stuff you've done uh, on your trips this summer. Uh, Carol just uh, posted that she uh, got Palm Island and a bunch of activity books for the car. Uh, you need stuff to be able to play in the car, and uh, you gotta, gotta keep the kids entertained. I've actually got something that may work for that. It's magnetic. Um, in, in my last video, I think I, I mentioned, um, oh no, it was my video on playing 
uh, on the patio, I recommended a game called Planet because it was magnetic as well. And that's a game where uh, you know, you've got this 3D planet and then you're taking turns choosing a region to add to that planet. The magnets help in the car. It's really nice. Um, Carol also recommends Conspiracy Abyss, uh, uh, Hanami Koji. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. And uh, some of the Matchbox Collection packed. Uh, I actually have not tried out most of those titles, Carol, but I love that you're shooting out some recommendations. Uh, Carol says that she totally owns Planet. Yeah, you know, the, there's, a, there's a certain uh, part of Planet where you ideally you have a table to lay out like the, the creatures that you want to score at the end. Uh, but there's some clever ways to do that. I talked about that in my play on the patio episode where you can use clothespins or um, there's these, uh, these card fans that are called card holders and they look like a little taco on a stick and you can put all the cards in there and uh, in that game, you don't have a hand of cards, so it's, you know, it's a little bit easier to manage. You just have to have one person who's sort of the card meister, uh, if you want to play that one uh, in the car. So, all that to say, I love, I love the recommendations, Carol. Keep them coming. Uh, I mentioned some magnets, and I wanted to show you something that we started carrying. Uh, this is not mind-blowing, I can tell you that, but this is a lovely wooden magnetic chess set. So usually when you think of a magnetic chess set, it's cheap plastic and it sticks to the top and that's fine, but they're tiny little pieces and they 100% of the time they get stuck between the seats and the car or you, they certainly are going to roll underneath the, um, the hotel bed and it's lost in the abyss, right? So this is a little bit more substantial. Again, it's it's maybe a little bit on the bigger side. It's definitely the biggest thing I'm recommending tonight, but the magnets are a huge plus and you don't have these tiny little pieces, so it's a lot easier to keep track of this kind of stuff. Um, it's got a really lovely wood grain finish, and of course that's a, a folding board. I don't know if you can tell by the picture there, uh, but you can see that there is the seam. So it's a nice folding board. The pieces are going to stay nice and tidy on the inside of that. It magnetically shuts closed. Um, really, really pretty high quality chess set, all things considered, uh, for 30 bucks. So. Uh, I, I couldn't pass this one up. This one's great. Uh, Carol's clarifying Matchbox Collection was a Kickstarter with five super compact card games. That sounds cool. I mean, the, so Matchbox being the, the compact, right? Like you could fit them inside of a Matchbox, presumably, um, or some, something along those lines. There is a company called Oink Games. We only get their stuff in every once in a while. It's a kind of a sort of smallish Japanese uh, company, but all of their stuff is going to come in and, and, and like all of their games packed inside like a wallet, basically. So that's another good company to look out for. Those games can be a bit hit or miss, um, but when you find the ones that are very, very good, you want them. You want them, baby. They're, they are uh, good crowd pleasers. Artist Goes to New York, that's a, that's a good one. Um, Excellent. Uh, I have a, one other class. So we're talking about chess. So I have another classic for you. This one is a shout out to my dad. What's up, pops? I'm recommending a uh, tr travel cribbage board. And if you have never played cribbage, it plays with a regular deck of cards. And it's awesome. It's just like a really good game. It's ideal for two uh, to three people. Uh, I've always, I, I feel like two players is like the default, but then there's like a three player variants that you can get by with. And the idea of cribbage is you're just gonna, um, you know, shuffle up the deck of cards and deal each player uh, four, uh, four cards and they are trying to um, basically make the best hand possible based on two ways of scoring. So one way of scoring is the hand itself. If you have pairs or if you have um, two cards that add up to 15, each one of those pairs or 15s is gonna be two points. So if you get, uh, but they're, they're unique pairs, right? So let's say you have uh, three of a kind. You got three sixes. So uh, the six of hearts and the six of spades, that's two points. Six of hearts, six of clubs is another two points, so that's four. And six of clubs and six of spades is six. So, uh, you know, you're trying to do those kinds of things, uh, those kinds of sequencing. Um, 
and you've got uh, the totals of 15 as well, right? So eight and seven, nine and six, and then uh, all the face cards are worth tens, which means that the stock on fives goes way up. Fives are awesome because you can have uh, jack, queen, five, and that's 15 for two, 15 for four. Or if you have jack, jack, five, 15, two, 15, four, pair is six, pair of jacks, right? Anyway, you're trying to piece together all these, um, uh, you know, sequences or whatever. But before you get to scoring your hand every round, you also have an opportunity to uh, peg points. It's called pegging. And that's where one person lays down a card and then your opponent is gonna lay down a card opposite that. And you're looking for some of those similar metrics. So you're looking to hit 15s, you're looking to hit 31s, in this case, instead of 30s. You're looking to have the last card and that's a nice way to get some extra points as well. So sometimes those smaller card numbers, two, three, four, those are really easy to squeeze in there right at the end uh, to get up to that, that perfect 31, uh, which is the maximum value and then you would reset. So I might lead with a nine. If you have a six, you play that six and then you say, hey, 15, two points for me. Um, there's, I mean, that's, that's like 90% of the rules. Uh, but it is one of those like all-time classics and uh, a portable cribbage board like this is plastic This probably weighs eight ounces like this is a great carry-on um, And this uh, board is plastic, but it's it's really high quality It's not like the cheap stuff. That's just gonna break on you uh, And you just need a regular set of playing cards. So definitely another great game for all audiences If you're just joining the stream. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to Thursday. I'm Graham. It's great to see you on Fair Game Favorites. We're talking about all kinds of travel games. So if you have any recommendations for games that are great for travel, small, compact, good for playing in the car, uh, I would love to hear them. So Allie shouts out and says that they've used um, Rory's uh, Story Cubes uh, in the car. And that is, uh, it's like an activity. It's almost not even a game, but I think I covered it in the past week or two on the stream here and uh, Rory Story Cubes are fascinating. You, you uh, roll these dice, I think usually two or three at a time, and they're all gonna have different symbols on them. And uh, you are going to uh, try to turn those symbols into a coherent story and you kind of riff off of each other. So you almost get like the, the writer's room feel if you're like, you know, hey, we gotta put together this, this great, great primetime TV show, right? Uh, and that's a really great game for uh, kids especially because it teaches um, high concept reading comprehension, right? It, it teaches you how to write and read stories. And you understand like, oh, when, when I watch a, an episode of TV, when I read a book, when I see a movie, it's gonna follow roughly like three or in the case of Shakespeare, five acts, right? So you're doing like a, a three act play. You do three rounds of these cubes. Uh, it's really, really cool. Um, that's a really great recommendation. All you need is just a place to roll these dice. And then you get everyone in the car talking, shooting out those creative juices. I love it. That's a great recommendation. Thank you, Allie. Um, I have a couple of more sweet, sweet travel recommendations for you on the stream. Next up from Game Right, I have Abandon All Artichokes because you got, apparently, it's all about goof, goofy titles uh, when it comes to uh, card games for kids. Uh, and Abandon All Artichokes, uh, actually, instead of, um, I'm trying to think of what genre this would, this would fall into, I guess I would call this a deck building game. And if you're not familiar with that, it's because it's usually uh, attributed to larger card games, um, something like, they're almost like board games, right? So something like Dominion or Marvel Legendary or any of the Legendary series, uh, Star Realms or Hero Realms, uh, Cubitos is sort of in this category as well. So in all of those games, you usually start with a very basic uh, deck of cards. I guess that's the case here. You're gonna start with a basic deck of 10 cards you draw a hand of five. A bunch of those cards are gonna be artichokes. And I'll give you a little secret here. The, the name of the game is to abandon all artichokes. So you have to get those artichokes out of your deck. The only way to do that is by uh, gaining new cards to add to your deck. And so uh, as you play your deck more and more, you're gonna have more opportunities to what's called compost 
your artichokes. But the, uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of cards in here. They're all gonna have different effects. Uh, so there's eggplants and beets and broccolis and onions, and then of course the artichokes themselves. So um, on your turn, you're going to uh, draw, you know, you've got your hand of five cards. You're gonna pick a vegetable card from the middle of the table. Maybe it's a beet, maybe it's an onion. Uh, so, uh, for example, maybe you choose an eggplant. You're going to add it to your hand. The eggplant, it says on the back of the box here, uh, when you play the eggplant, you're going to compost an artichoke along with the eggplant itself. And all players pass two cards in their hand to the left. Whoa. Um, uh, I want to make sure that my, my stream is still, is still coming in good. I'm getting some warning messages from Facebook. They say, Graham. The internet's fallen through. Can I get a quick post from someone in the chat to make sure that my video stream is coming in loud and proud? Um, this, uh, I actually had a severed internet connection like a month ago. So maybe this is a monthly thing. Just the, the, the first stream of the month, gonna have internet issues. Uh, Carol says it paused, but it's back. Thank you very much, Carol. So, and thanks, Kyle, chiming in well. Thank you so much. Love, love to hear it. So, uh, continuing on with my spiel about artichokes here. Uh, once you've chosen one of these cards from the center of the table, you're going to get a chance to play uh, cards from your hand one at a time. Uh, like I said, each of these cards are going to have a special effect. Hopefully they're helping to compost some of these artichokes out of your hand. They're going to mix up cards like we just saw with the eggplant. We're passing cards to the left. You know, who knows what's going to happen here. You can pass off some artichokes, get rid of them, pass them to someone else. Uh, and then all those cards go to your discard pile. You drop a new hand. Now I said your starting deck only comes with 10 cards. So once you run out of cards from your deck, you're going to shuffle up that deck start over with it so you get to see these cards that you've added to your hand multiple times which is great um, and so you're kind of sculpting and destroying and adding cards to your deck as you play throughout the game so that's where the deck building name comes in there if it sounds complicated it's not it's super super easy uh, this is a great game that i would play with like my girlfriend's mom who is not really much of a gamer she likes she likes cards she'll play uh, rummy, you know, this would be a good game for her, right? Uh, this is a great all audiences game. It only takes 20 minutes, so this is a nice fast one. It comes in this really cool little tin. So, awesome travel experience there. Uh, okay, I've got one last recommendation for you tonight, and it's, it's another card game, kind of falls into that Uno category again, but this one's uh, the goofiest of them all. Uh, we got We've got kids walking down the street. They're waving to me. They love it. Live stream, baby. Yeah, that's right. Hello, Downers Grove. Okay. This game is called Tapeworm. That's right. It's a game called Tapeworm. It sounds gross. It kind of is, a little bit. Uh, they've got it ages eight and up, so your, uh, your young ones and maybe your old ones are going to uh, kind of crack up at this one. But the objective is to get rid of all the cards in your hand. You have a lot of square cards that have segments of tapeworms of different colors. So it might be just a straight red, or it could be a red that then intersects with a white. Uh, and you're gonna lay these down on the table like dominoes. They're gonna have some extra added effects. Sometimes you're gonna be able to mess with um, your uh, opponent's hand, or you're gonna be able to uh, sever whatever the old uh, color was, the old, um, you know, if you had a long string of, of a pink tapeworm, you get to sever that and now you're gonna turn it into a white one. There's also the dreaded black one that kind of just um, ends your turn. If you, on your turn, you get to lay down multiple cards if you are connecting one long colored string. So that's why it's important to cut off the tapeworms that your opponents are trying to use uh, and, um, you know, change them to a color that you would much prefer. Uh, so, Tapeworm's real goofy. It's like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, our employee, uh, Dan, that works here, uh, loves this game to play with his mom because uh, they think it's real goofy. And it is really goofy. Uh, but your kids are going to love this. It's a weird one, uh, and it's awesome. And, um, yeah, uh, definitely uh, comes highly recommended. Uh, Carol's got a, a couple uh, other recommendations for great travel games. Uh, hey, that's my fish. 
Uh, I think I remember that one. Uh, Silver and Gold is another good um, uh, group game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it's kind of a, a very clever card game. It's a lot, it's unlike some other things. Um, Quicks and what's the other one that I love from them? Um, Bloom. Quicks and Bloom are both game right dice games. They're kind of in the same category as Yahtzee, but they're a little bit more uh, uh, s spatial. You have to kind of map out some stuff on your car, on your uh, little score pad, at least for Quicks. So, Peter asks, is it magnetic or how does it work while driving? Or is it better for the stopover? So, uh, I think the card games that are recommended tonight, uh, like Tapeworm specifically, uh, probably Abandon All Artichokes as well, maybe not great card games. This would be like, you know, you could play this on the table in your hotel room, for example, or if you're out camping, you could play this on the floor of a tent. You don't need like a huge area, but neither of these are gonna be great for specifically in the car. Um, cribbage or magnetic chess, on the other hand, you could probably swing both of these in the car. With cribbage, uh, this board here is a scoreboard and you just have a little peg that you're gonna use to keep score and so you don't have to worry about that. And I've played this in the car with my dad before. Uh, so that this would definitely fall into that category. So all of these are small, compact, gonna fit into a bag, not gonna weigh down your carry-on if you're worried about weight, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, be a lot of fun for everyone that you're traveling with, so. Wonderful, well thank you so much for popping in for our little weekly live stream here. Uh, I hope I did not disappoint. I would love to, uh, if you're watching this in the future, go ahead and throw down some comments of some other just great, wonderful travel games that you've had good experiences with. We'd love to kind of share that knowledge and hear what kind of games you're really loving. Uh, and you've made it to the end of the stream. Congratulations, which means that I have for you, my very, very special listener, uh, a 20% off a single full-priced item coupon for you. This is a verbal coupon, which means that you just come into uh, either fair game location over the weekend, it's in person only. It's good for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday this weekend, which is the, uh, hold on, the, if, the, if the four, well, the, so the 9th, 10th, or 11th uh, this weekend, um, we're, uh, this coupon is good for. Uh, you just say it at the cash register, say, Graham, your boy Graham sent you. And uh, you say the, the code word, and that's going to get you 20% off of any regularly priced item. This week's coupon code word is road trip. So if you say road trip at the register, uh, and you mention that you got this code from the stream, then you get a 20% off coupon off of any uh, regularly priced item. So we would love to see you this weekend. Uh, if you got a, if you, if, if you got, if you have a road trip coming up this month, uh, we would love to have you pop in uh, and maybe you can pick up something uh, for the kiddos or for yourself. I won't tell them, shh, your secret is safe with me. Thanks so much for joining us for Fair Game Favorites. I am Graham. I look forward to uh, being in touch with you very soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday.